great pharaoh. The gift of Troy is a fabulous fabric from the land of the five rivers. years ago, when we came to Los Angeles, I really believed that the greatness of the Raiders would be in its future. for another edition of the 50 and 50 show man this is a a, a bonus edition of show man we not we are not going live at our usual monday spot but we are going to be going live on our, our at our usual monday spot just it's not monday yet so but we we still want to talk about what's going on with the raider uh with the raiders the team uh it's that time of the week it's near the end of the week there's some some things that happened some things that haven't happened we want to get into it Man, so uh, let, let's not waste any time, man. But severe, man, what's going on with you, man? How you been? Ah, uh, man, nothing. Uh, man, I've, I've been good, man. Been good, you know. Just uh, a little surprise show, for, you know, for you know, for everybody that been that been rocking with us this long, man. You know, give you guys a little bit of extra, you know, for the weekend. You know, a little, yeah, little some extra, something to tide you over until that Monday. And you know, at, you know, as usual, man. Make sure don't forget to clock in and hit that hit that like button, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit that notification bell. All that good stuff, uh, but yeah, like I said, we, there's a lot to talk about. You know, hey, R- Raiders football is 365 days out of the year, man. It it it, it yeah. never it never stops. Uh, and let let's let's get into it, man. So the Raiders um, have been losing out on some free agents, but they've also had some signings here and there. And one of the signings that they had was uh, Palomao, their uh, that safety linebacker was pretty much signed to a, a deal i know they to begin for to begin free agency uh b- before free agency starts I, f- I believe teams have that ability to tender certain players because yeah. uh, i believe palomar was a restricted free agent and 
they pretty much were able to agree to terms to a contract. How do you, how do you feel about the move, man? He's a safety, kind of a depth uh, safety, and and I guess you could say maybe even a linebacker. Yeah. As in, in the defense, that's at times depending on the the, the the defensive alignment. What do you feel? How do you feel about Palomao as as a player for this team? Yeah, man, I like Palomao. Uh, going into last year, you know, I had high hopes for for Palomao. I, I was kind of hoping he would be um, be a guy that saw the field a little bit more than he actually did. Um, but he's progressing. I, I, I like the progression. He's a guy. He, he's undrafted, you know, so it's not like he we we spent any draft capital on him. He's a guy that came in league as an undrafted free agent. Um, he's been able to make a make a mark on his team. You know, had a pick last year. I think he's only going to continue to get better. Um, you know, as he spends more time in this defense um, under the toolage of, of Patrick Graham as well as you know our new secondary coaches. Uh, I'm excited to kind of see, or, or, or I'm I'm uh, I'm anxious to see kind of if he's able to take that next step and become a, a truly you know impactful player um, down in and down out. He, he's a guy that offers you some depth at safety, but as you mentioned, he's kind of a hybrid linebacker as well, can kind of play that 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 big nickel role where he's you no know, not really a linebacker, but he's not really a, a safety, but it's like having a, a guy that does both on, on the field. So um no, I'm 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 excited to see what he does. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's a depth piece. Um, he's just one of those players I think the coaching staff likes. They like his probably versatility, um, and they're able to bring him back. I mean, the Raiders haven't really made any big moves since the first day of free agency, to to, to be honest. I mean, we we did sign the running back. Uh, we talked about that on, on our last uh, live or last show episode, uh, and I think it was uh, Alexander Mad- Madison. We were able to sign him. But outside of that, it's been like, you know, signing Harrison Bryant. We all know how big a signing that is. Bro, but, uh, come on now. <laughs> put, put, put some respect on that man's name. You got to put some respect on Harrison Bryant, man. He quality depth uh, tight end, man. He's he's going to be yeah. playing some quality uh, snaps, as a, right. a especially uh, as a blocker. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's like blocker, but, special teamer, all that stuff. Man, it's all important, man. It's all important, especially the NFL, man. It's it, it's it stands for not for long to be honest with you like players get injured left and right so you need those types of depth signing that being said like i said there hasn't really been big signings outside of the christian wilkins and the backup quarterback in garden Minshew or bridge quarterback starter we don't know at this point but uh the raiders have kind of let a lot of players kind of test free agency and go to other teams yeah. and a player that was not brought back was uh, corner backup corner, corner Tyler Hall and we did leave we also talked about this before as well Amik Robertson going to the Detroit Lions we lost out on him and Tyler Hall I kind of liked him yeah. you know oh, ever yeah. since he's got came, came to the Raiders uh, he was a guy that like you know stepped up when his number was yeah. called uh, and I always thought that like Tyler Hall if it wasn't for Amik he would probably get more uh, snaps on the football field yeah, but fact, fact. he was he 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 was able to sign with the Eagles, so the Raiders let another corner go to another team. How do you feel about uh losing out on Tyler Hall? Yeah, man, I don't want to say it's a big loss because not like he made a lot of contributions, but I think that's another depth piece that they were losing, especially after losing a who you know I felt would have been a good depth piece once you get a solid corner to go across from Jack Jones. Then you also lose Tyler Hall as well. Um, he's a guy that, you know, whenever he did get opportunities, he, he seemed to play well. I know when we signed Duke Shelley last year, a lot of people were really high on Duke Shelley. And mm-hmm. and if I recall correctly, I, I, I believe Tyler Hall – I mean, I, knew, I know Duke Shelley got cut, got cut, but I believe Tyler Hall had actually beat him out to a roster spot. So it's, it's a situation where we seem to be losing players – at a much faster rate than we're retaining or acquiring players, and uh, I don't recall who we have on our on our practice squad as as a corner. I believe Sam Webb was still there after you know, he took a, a hiatus you know, with another team. I believe with the Panthers, and he came back. But other than that, there's not really a lot of depth on this team at, at corner. You know, we have Jack Jones, we have Jacorian Bennett, and Nate Hobbs, and behind them, man, it is really. You no, know, it's 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 really just just a, a land of misfit toys, man. So maybe that's the direction we go later on in free agency. Um, maybe we make a trade. Maybe we address that during the draft. But uh, corner right now is looking very thin. Yeah, 
Yeah, man. And and it makes you think, man, the other day, you know, AP over there on the sideline at, at Alabama's Pro Day talking to Terion Arnold, he seems like an AP type of guy, you know what I mean? Like uh, alpha, alpha dude on the football field, uh, physical corner. The personalities you can see, you can see a personality like a, an, like an Arnold at corner can me- mesh well with with AP. But that being said, AP's a voice in the room. He's not going to be the final decision maker when picking that corner spot. So I know it, Severe. Don't worry, Keon Mitchell is probably going to be the number one guy on your board. Don't you know what I mean? Hopefully, Ra- Raiders will make the best decision. It's not going to be any uh, reactionary decisions because from years past, it felt like the coaches had a lot of say or a lot of pull compared to the GM. I think this year, it, I, I, if not at the very least, it's equal. If not, Telesco probably has the final say on decisions just because I think Mark liked the experience that that a, that a Telesco brings. And I think he trusts him a little, more, a little bit more to make decisions on this on his team. I felt like Mark, even though he says that he, he hired a guy like Dave Ziegler to make the final decisions and and, you know, obviously McDaniels being the head coach. But it felt like Ziegler was only there because of McDaniels. It always felt like he th- he would always have – he would always have, like – he would throw shots at him. As, like, I think I, we talked about this before. Like, at the end of the season, he had an interview with Vic Tafer and he threw a shot at, at, at Ziegler and was like, you know, hey, Ziegler has a lot to learn. And, and it's, it's, that was kind of a weird comment to make when the guy's still employed for you, like, you know what I mean? Why would you, why, why would you even give that to the, to, to a beat writer? Why would you even put that out there? But he didn't say anything bad about McDaniels. Yeah. You back, know, so back. you could tell who Mark Davis kind of favored there. He never really said anything bad about McDaniels, John Gruden, but Mike Mayock and Ziegler on the other hand, mm, they didn't really get the favoritism that they got, that the head coaches got. Yeah, man. It's like Mark Davis. <laughs> Mark Davis couldn't wait to get Ziegler up out of there. He's like, no, not only am I finding Josh McDaniels, brother, you got to pack your bags too. Like, you get up out of here too. So it's a situation where it's like, you know, uh, it was speculated that Ziegler wasn't his first choice. And the only reason that Ziegler got the job is because, you know, Mark Davis wanted Josh McDaniels that badly, which in hindsight, man, that it was that's just, 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 just a terrible move. Anytime you have that head coaching gym dynamic, you want input from the head coach, but that in- yeah. input should be basically limited to, hey, you know what? These are the kind of players I want. I want players with these attributes. I want players that fit into this this scheme, right? Unless you abs- absolutely know a guy, like perfect example with, with Antonio Pierce and Jack Jones. Like he knows that guy. So unless you know a guy, you know, you shouldn't be handpicking players. That should be the job of the GM. You know, and that way those duties are, are separated. It's hard enough to be a head coach in the NFL, but to be a, be the head coach and be the GM at the same time, you know, it never works. You know, it yeah. worked for a short – well, not a short period of time, but it worked in New England. And that's because, you know, they had, they had the greatest coach of all time and they had the greatest quarterback of all time. But just about every other scenario, it has not worked. That being said, let's pivot. Let's pivot to, to – to, to the stuff that we, you know, a lot of people want to talk about, especially uh, Raider Nation, and we always notice stuff like this. Raider hate. And one of the Raider hates this week that we talked about early in the week was uh, Christian Wilkins. Christian Wilkins, Chris, the D-tackle Christian Wilkins hate continues. So uh, Brad G- Gagnon from the Bleach Report, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, from Bleach Report, pretty much called Christian Wilkins to the Raiders a a very pricey move, one of the worst contracts to give, especially to a player that's never been a pro bowler at his position, never been a all pro. Um, Then he, you know, obviously he brought up PFF and how he's never been on at the top of the statistics in certain PFF stats. Uh, Yeah. He just called the, uh, called the move a really bad move just because how do you pay someone that much money and they've never really had that much success? Um, or they had limited success, never had more than 10 sacks. Uh, but that being said, what what do you think of this hate that's that's coming from ESPN, Bleacher Report? Like, 
Man. It's crazy because if you look at people that actually played the game, they all love the signing. Like Jalen Ramsey, will, or immediately, right? Jalen Ramsey, a guy who played last year with Christian Wilkins in Miami, was talking about how lethal he felt the combination of Christian Wilkins and Max Crosby would be. Like people who really study the game, they, they like to move. Uh, I think sometimes, you know, the, 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 the talking heads, they get too caught up in he's getting this much money. Okay, well, mm-hmm. that's how free agency works, right? Sometimes you have to overpay to get to get the guys that you want. But, you know, it's not about what, what that contract is. It's about what they do on the field. And I, th- I just think that he's never really played with a truly elite um, you know, running mate on defense. Uh, Jalen Phillips was kind of turning into that. But when you put a guy like Max Crosby on the field, who's an alpha as well, and can take some attention away from him, I think you pay guys. You sometimes you pay them for what they have done, but part of that contract is, is you're paying them for what you project them to do. And I think the projection of what Christian Wilkins can do on the defensive line with, with Max Crosby and Malcolm Coons, I think is you know I think I, I don't think it's going out on a limb to say. He's barring injury. He's going to get double digit sacks this year. Yeah, yeah, man. I look at the end of the day, and and this this critique on the move is kind of short sighted. It's not. They're, they're not. It's, there's context, and and that's why that's why you're here watching us talk about the Raiders because we know the team and we know we know the team. We watch the team just like you guys pay attention to the team and what's going on, and we can all see that getting a pass rush impact D tackle was going to be the right move for this defense. This defense can go to another notch because it's going to open up, like you said, Max Crosby, Kuntz, uh, even even a, 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 a second-year player in Wilson, Tyree Wilson. He's going to have more one-on-one opportunities. We have a D tackle. A D tackle automatically is going to command more double teams, um, and it's going to open up, for especially for the outside pass rushers. They're going to be able to go one-on-one against the tackles. And that's that that uh, that alone makes the move really good, in my opinion. It's a, a home run, in my opinion. And I, guys like this talking about, well, this is one of the worst contracts. How do you call it the worst contracts when you haven't even seen how it's going to work out for the Raiders? Like, exactly. you know, I I could understand like certain contracts you can say that, but with with a guy like Christian Wilkins and the position that he's played, he's been productive. Has he been a pro lover? No. Uh, has he been all pro? But look, think about the players in front of him that have gotten the nod. You know what I mean? You 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 got the Aaron Donalds. You got the – there's other – and some of these players that you could probably mention are like guys that, of course, are going to get the nod over him. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The, the Chris okay. Jones, the Aaron Donalds, especially all pro because he mentioned all pro as a reason why, yeah. wow, you, you you can't give a guy that, that big of a contract. He's never been all pro. But – Look, let's be honest. Free agency is all about getting overpaid. Every player in free agency is going to get overpaid because they're always going to be setting the market. It doesn't like, you know, at the end of the day, and I, in my opinion, I think the Raiders are lucky to get a guy like Christian Wilkins to be available because he wasn't supposed to be available if it wasn't for, you know, the Dolphins having like their cap issues. But yeah, fact. that, hey, we all know what it is, man. People, hey, people like hating on the Raiders. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to always want to point point to that, but let's keep it real. We, they, they're gonna hate on the Raiders because it's 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 easy, it's easy yeah. to point at the Raiders and be like, oh look, they just handed out a big contract. That was a terrible contract. Why did they hand it to Christian Wiggins? There's always gonna be that negative talk. Uh, but hey, we're telling you right now, like great move, home run. Don't don't listen to this outside noise. Christian Wilkins, definitely to me one of the best signings in free agency, just because of the fit and the impact that he's gonna have. Because we could see it. You know, we can we can yeah. see it from afar. You know, like the fact is, how long has it been since we had a pass rush D tackle? It's been way too long, way too long. Long time, man. Warren Sapp. You know, if you consider Tommy Kelly, that well, what was was crazy is that of all the free agency, right? How this guy says is one of the worst moves. Rich Eisen, who's been around the, the NFL a long time, and one one of the smartest guys in the business. I think he had it as his third best signing of this free agency period. So, you know, it's different strokes for different folks. But as you said, 
the Raiders getting hated on is is, is a story as as old as time, man. And it, it, it shall continue until until we prove that we can win consistently year in and year out. We're going to be the punching bag of the rest of the league, and, and you know that's fine because it's always been us against the world anyway. Yeah, and it, yeah, I'm I'm not going to act like that contract was nothing. I mean, it it is a big time contract. Uh, yeah. And handing out handing out a contract is always going to be a risk. You know, it's always yeah. there's always going to be risk, whether it's in the draft, whether it's in free agency. It's always going to be a risk. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to make a move. And for the Raiders, they're trying to win now. So you understand the move makes sense. The move yeah. makes sense. And to be honest with you, Christian Wilkins is what 29 years old. You know, yeah. so it's not like you can argue like, is he going to see like? The entirety of that contract, we all know the the how the NFL works. They're like two to – you'll see a five-year deal, but it's really a two-year deal. It's really a three-year yeah. deal. So, yeah. you know, hey, look, I think, you know, I think what, what – I think you know what it is? I think probably his editor was like, you know, hey, we can't be positive here. We got we to gotta find some – we got to – make some clickbait, art, clickbait articles or, uh, or a clickbait um, point that you're trying to make about free agency and – yeah. I think that was one of them, in my opinion. But, you know, hey, agree to disagree. Agree right, to disagree. Right. But another piece of information, another newsworthy uh, moment this week, we found out that Devontae Adams is going to be on a Netflix documentary. Yeah. Um, he's going to be on a Netflix documentary. Uh, they haven't announced the date of when it's going to air. Uh, it's, it's pretty much part of the series... Uh, the court, so the, the same people that made the quarterback series with Patrick Mahomes, Kirk Cousin, and uh, Mariota, they uh, pretty much are making a receivers documentary, and it's going to be, I believe, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, and I forgot who the the other receiver. I don't know if you can remember, uh, but Debo, uh, Debo Amon Samuels, Ross, yeah, Debo, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and George Kittle, and George Kittle. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They have George Kittle in there. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So 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 Devontae Adams is going to be a part of that documentary. Well, what makes it kind of interesting is when it was set, the timing of when it was set. It was from the 2023 season. So the cameras were following Devontae Adams throughout the season, and we all know what happened during the season. You know, yeah. uh, my guy, my guy McDaniel's. I, there's a guy named McDaniel's got fired. So. Yes. Look, yes. They, they, there might be yeah. some hot. There, there might be some things that might have happened in that documentary that was said during that time. So, we'll, let, we'll hopefully, uh, we'll be able to get a sneak preview of that soon. But um, it's going to be interesting. I think every everybody's going to be paying attention to what happens uh, when that documentary gets released. Not facts, man. In fact, I, I'm surprised that Josh McDaniels let that go down. Like that is not something that Bill Belichick would have allowed, bro. Like letting the camera crew go in there and actually like film that kind of stuff. Like no way in the world Bill Belichick let 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 that happen. So that shows you the kind of power and and leeway that they were giving a guy like, like Devontae Adams because, like I said, man, a, 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 the Patriots way, that is not that's not something you do, man. So it's gonna be interesting to see exactly what they captured. If they if they caught the infamous you no, know, uh, you know vent vent meeting that went on, and or if they caught the moment where AP said something about about the Patriots and Justin Daniels snapped, is like you don't talk about the Patriots like that. Like these moments that we we heard about before, or we heard about you know uh, throughout the season, it'd be interesting to see if they were able to catch any of, any of those moments because I think that that kind of stuff right there, that's must see TV. That is must see oh, sure. TV. For sure, because we've seen we've seen how frustrated Devontae Adams was at point at, yeah. during the season. So, you know, you know there there was moments where Devontae Adams left left the rock locker room and didn't want to talk to anybody. But did he talk to the cameras to, uh, from you know from net, the Netflix crew? Did he say something that he probably was real calculative and like you know what I could say something to them because you know eventually when this gets released, these guys are not going to be here. I know they're going to get fired. <laughs> I'm I'm sure he probably I'm pre, I'm pretty sure that he probably brought that like thought about it you know who knows who knows, um you know Devontae Adams sometimes has a lot to say I remember there was a, a big interview, uh that he had that everyone was talking during the off season where he pretty much, called out 
the Raiders for not making the right moves where he felt like yeah. that he agreed with. You know, this is before the yeah. season. So we know that he's highly opinionated and he has a lot to say, but yeah, we'll 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 we'll, we'll see how that uh, how that goes, man. So hopefully this will come out soon. I think it might come out last year the quarterback one, I think came did it come out during the season or right before the season? I'm trying to think. I think it's right. I think it's right before the season. I mean, most likely, I would assume it's gonna come out sometime between after the draft, but before training camp. That's kind of like the the NFL dead space where it's not a lot going on. So mm-hmm. you know, free agency is essentially over. The draft is over, but you no know, OTAs and training camp isn't here. So you know, people are looking for some content. So that'd be something they can go to easily uh, for content. So I, I think that that's if the NFL is smart, it'll be a, it'll be around that time. Okay. Okay. Moving moving along. Next next thing that uh, this week that happened, or nothing really happened. It was it was you know Daniel Jer- uh, Jeremiah. He's yeah. the the Mike Mayock of you know today's. Yeah. He's that quarterback. He's not the quarterback, but the but the draft expert, the guy that everybody's kind of listening to. He's the NFL Network's uh, Todd McShay and. Uh, Who's the other guy that's Mel been Kiper. there for years? Mel, 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 Mel Kiper. Mel Kiper. So when their mock drafts come out, everybody's kind of like paying attention because they're pretty much talking to the league. They're trying to get an idea of who's going to be drafted. Uh, we all know that I think Daniel Jeremiah's background, he's been a he's a he has been a scout before. He's yeah. probably talked to he's probably talked to a lot of people, league officials from different teams. So people pay attention to his 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 uh his mock drafts. And this week it came out. And he pretty much mocked uh, Michael Penix to the Raiders at number 13. Yes. Number 13. Now, throughout this whole process, you know, smoke season, yeah. Michael Penix has been a guy that people kind of were like, uh, he's probably going to be dropping. His, his value, his stock is kind of dropping a little bit due to his injuries and, you know, a lot of different uh, reasons. But Michael Penix was that guy that was dropping, and some people had him. P- people mocked him early on in the second round. Yeah. But now he's moved to, f- moved up to thirteen. How, how do you feel about the the spot at thirteen? So we kind of talked about this before, uh, and I have Michael Penix as my second quarterback. I got Jane Daniels one. I got Michael Penix two. Initially, I would not have been happy with drafting Michael Penix at, at thirteen. I would not have been happy, but the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. Uh, what's interesting is that I want to say this is the same scenario, but it's kind of similar set of circumstances last year, right? Uh, where Dan, where Darren, Daniel Jeremiah's little bit of his claim to fame is last year he had the Texans drafting C.J. Stroud and also trading back up to number three to take Will Anderson in, in one of his last mock drafts. And people kind of like, you know, like, bro, you, you outside of your mind. No in the world that it happens. Lo and behold, that's what they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, the, what the organization was, or what, what people were saying when they talk about that particular move is that they actually had Will Anderson higher, but they knew that if they drafted Will Anderson first and tried to make a trade up for C.J. Stroud, it was no way it was going to happen. So I think this might be a similar situation here where, you know, what corner might be a bigger need? Offensive tackle might be a bigger need. Offensive guard might be might be a bigger need. Uh, but if you want your quarterback, you're going to have to draft them a little bit earlier, and then maybe you can trade back into the back end of the first round and get one of those other guys. You can get, you know, a, a, a offensive tackle later on, get a corner a little bit later on, um, you know, get, get a guard in, in the middle rounds. But if you flip that, and you draft one of those guys, and a team is dead set on drafting Michael Penix at quarterback. You likely aren't going to be able to be able to pull off that that same two for one. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just it's kind of tricky because like the value of the quarterback is so high, exactly that that's that one that's that position where people kind of reach. You know what Facts. I mean? Like th- they might not necessarily be the best player in the draft, but since the value of the quarterback is so high, they might get picked over the best player in the draft. Like exactly. last year, like um, even though he he kind of dropped a little bit, he he dropped, 
Jalen Carter was arguably the, arguably the best player in the draft. So look how many quarterbacks it. got taken ahead of him. But yeah. that being said, like, hey, <laughs> C.J. Stroud, man, he, exactly. might, he might be that guy. But uh, Jalen Carter ain't no slouch. He had a good uh, rookie season as well. But what I'm say, trying to say is that that quarterback value is so high that it might supersede taking the best player in the draft. I mean, a better player at a different position, like maybe exactly. offensive tackle, maybe corner, you know, which we didn't we didn't touch on. The Raiders have yet to sign an O line and corner yet yes. in the free agency, and we've let Illuminor sign to another team. We've let Amik Robinson and Tyler Hall sign to another team, but we haven't really addressed those positions. And it it just looks like man, like the Raiders might be gearing for the gearing up for the draft to attack those positions because I don't see how you can wait this long in free agency. Unless you might think that you, you're going to attack the draft to get those positions, but that's a whole uh, different conversation, man. We'll we'll save that. But as far as Penix, I, I'm not mad at it. I was hoping this is this is my hope that he would be there in a second, and then we draft maybe a, a tackle at at number 13. But it's just looking like the Raiders are not going to wait for that, man. I don't think I don't think he's going to last. I think you you got to think that if if Seattle is on the clock. I know they traded for Sam Howell, but if Seattle is on the clock, his former uh, offensive coordinator in college is the offensive coordinator for the Seattle uh, Seahawks. Yes. He's familiar with the area because he's from. He played for the Washington Husky Huskies. It's like oh, it's like a perfect fit right there. You know what I mean? I, yes. It makes so it's it makes so much sense. So then, if you're the Raiders, do you risk? You know, Michael Penix drop, you know, getting picked. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you got to be confident that you could trade up to get into the first round. And is it worth it? Is it worth picking up another player and then trying to trade up to go into the first round and getting, like, what? Yeah. Giving up what? How many? I think Tashawn Reed the other day, he had, like, a a, a, a a mock draft with other beat writers from other teams. And one of the things that he did was he, he picked, I think, an offensive tackle at number – Number 13, and he traded into the first round to grab Penix, but he gave up, uh, I mean, damn near the whole draft. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. To, 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 <laughs> so I don't, is it going to be worth it? Yeah, see, and, and that's what I was saying. That price tag isn't as heavy if you're drafting a non quarterback. If there's a quarterback on the board and a team knows essentially you're drafting up to draft or moving up to draft a quarterback. They're gonna make they're gonna make you pay that high ticket. They're gonna try to extract as much out of you as they can because they know they can at that point. If even if you do it backwards, you may not get the maximized value on that particular pick. But if you're trading back into the first round for whatever other player you have identified, then you'll get more value on that back end, on that trade up. And then you have two players in the same class that you covet. And I think that's a, a very valuable thing. And another thing too, one of my concerns is like, all right, obviously I'm hey, I've seen so many draft picks by the Raiders, so many risks that they take in, so many, so many busts. We all know the draft is not a guarantee, no matter who you pick at the draft, but it's all about probability. And like, man, it just feels like when the Raiders take a risk, it usually t it tends to bite them. Like yeah. that, it, it tends to like they tend to like have to learn the hard way. And one of the things that I'm concerned about with Penix is the fact that, like, can he be a guy that can be a second reaction player? Because in today's NFL, you know, you got to have that ability to create. You got to have that ability to, to like, if it's not there, if the guy's not open, you got to figure out a way to buy some time, use your legs. Is Penix that guy? Because his skill set is more of a kind of like a pocket passer. And here, here's some clips. I think uh, this is where – if you want to break them down, and, and, and I'm going to put it on the screen real quick. Let's see here. And this is against Texas, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the screen, and we can yeah. see a little bit of maybe possibly there might be something there. There might be yeah, something man. there. Gonna... I, I kind of spoke about it previously. Bruce Feldman talked about it. Penix is much more athletic than, than he's given credit for. And, and, and in this clip, you can kind of see he's willing to, to stand, stare in the barrel, you know, know he's going to take a big hit, deliver an accurate throw to the outside shoulder. Um, and and 
Texas, they have two defensive tackles that are going to be fairly high draft picks. You know, and a, a guy in Byron Murphy that some people want us to take at 13 or wanted us to take at 13 before we uh, we, we acquired uh, Christian Wilkins. And then they have Tavondre Sweat, who was a guy that could go in the first, will probably be no later than, than the second round pick as well. So he's doing this in this game against two of the best defensive tackle prospects in the class. You see right there, a lot of people say, you know, what, what will he do when he's under pressure? Um, at that particular moment, he stood down a barrel and he delivered an accurate throw, knowing he's going to take a big hit. So I think that's that's big. So that first clip that I was playing while uh, Severe was talking, it was it was a play where he he knew he was going to get te- he's, he knew he was going to get hit, and he was able to uh, make a big time throw on the sideline. And then this right here, you you could see a little bit of okay, okay, you know what I mean? And yeah. and and Texas. You know he has this on film. You know what I mean. He he it, Texas what wasn't no slouch. They got a couple of guys or a few guys on that D line that, that are going to get taken in the first few rounds. So, yes, uh, including a guy that's been mocked, Byron Murphy, I believe, has been mocked at thirteen yes. to the Raiders. Obviously, that might change with the Christian Wilkins signing. I don't know if they want to take a deep tackle that high with other. Yeah, Better I mean, change. yeah, exactly. You don't want to take a deep tackle that high. When you have other pressing needs and there's other players at that position that could be that you can get like like corner, but yeah. look at you, you see him making a guy miss and being accurate finds finds his guy open up in the middle. Uh, boom. We love to see it, yeah. man. Hey, man, if, if if he's that guy, if he can do this on the next level, if you know, and he can he can stay healthy because he has a good arm. Yeah, he has a big arm. A big arm. Probably the best passer in this class. And, and one thing I want to say is how finicky the NFL fans are and the NFL media is. Just just think back to what people were saying about Michael Penix after that Texas game. They were worried, like, man, is Penix going to last outside the top ten? So 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 just think about this for for a second, right? The, the kind of the game that shot C.J. Stroud up draft boards was that Georgia game. Uh, and it's a game that, that Ohio State, the guy missed a kick, and they, they subsequently lost the game. But the lasting impression that we had of C.J. Stroud was of him going up against um, a, the, the Georgia Bulldogs and having a great game. So imagine if Michael Penix did exactly what he did against Texas, but he lost the game. What will people be saying? If you just take out that national championship performance, which is what kind of dropped his stock, and the last time you saw him play was against Texas, he'd be a no-doubt first-round pick. No-doubt top 15 pick. That's what everybody was saying after that game. But since he went out there and he had a bad performance against a team that he was overmatched against, they dropped his stock. So I I think it, it... you know, sometimes the media and, and fans we, we get we're too easily swayed, and people always remember the very last thing they they see, and the last thing that they saw was was Michael Penix not having a, a great game against the Michigan Wolverines, and then they remember JJ McCarthy winning, but you know what did JJ McCarthy do in that game? See, and the thing the thing is too, it's not just what he, the national championship game. It's not just that. I think the biggest thing to be. The biggest thing with him is the injuries. I think it, you it, it does raise your eyebrow that the fact that he was injured for like season ending injuries for four years in college. That's yeah. a lot. That's a lot. He hasn't been Bro, that's since. a lot that ha- happened at a, at a very young age. You know what I mean? Like at, at at the most important position of football field, and he's not a big guy. You know, he, I know he's six yeah. two, but he's not a big guy. Like so. You know, if he takes some shots from 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 some NFL D tackles, NFL yeah. D ends, and they're landing on him and they're hitting him, yeah. stuff like that is going to add up. So teams are going to be a little bit more worried to to draft a guy like that in the, early in the first round. But it's it's going to be tough, man. I, I I hope I hope the Raiders find a way to trade up, man. I trade <laughs> up and get, get their guy. I, that's what I'm hoping. I don't want them to force a pick, man. I don't want them to force. If if they're not if they're not fully bought in and in love with Michael Penix, don't get him at all. Don't do do not get him at thirteen. Do not get him at thirteen. Don't force that pick. Do not force that pick. Get 
get that top player, get the Terry and Arnold, get the Keon Mitchell, get the uh, whoever the top O-line prospect is on the board, get that those players instead of a guy like Penix if you feel like he is the – the backup, 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 backup option, and you're kind of like, uh, you're not 100 fully bought in. Like, it's okay. We can we can live to fight another day. I rather, I rather as have. I'm just being honest. I'm keeping it real, bro. I'm keeping it real. I don't want him to force a pick. I don't want him to force a pick, you. man. I feel you. I feel you. It's, I've seen too many. I'm, I've I've seen too many busts, man. I've seen too too many Cleveland Farrells. I've seen too many uh, Damon Arnett's. I've seen too many Alex Leatherwoods. I've seen too many Jamarcus Russells. I can keep going, man. I can keep going yeah. different areas, different times, s- 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 same results. Like, do not force that pick. Get a guy that you're 100% fully bought in. Hopefully, Tles- Telesco, with his experience in the first round, drafting the first round, he brings that he brings that to the uh, to the Raiders, and they they get a good guy in the first round. And I, and I think it to me, I think I think the Raiders are leaning toward getting a corner or O line, and that's what I was alluding yeah. to earlier. The fact that we haven't signed an O-liner to a corner yet, it's like it's kind of like, all right, you can see their plan really is to just was definitely to attack the D-line position because that's that was a priority. And then the backup QB spot was a priority. So to yeah. give them, so you can see how that kind of gives them flexibility in the draft. But O-line and corner is ignored. Man, I think they're kind of like setting themselves up to to draft one of those two positions. It's either going to be O-line or corner at number 13. Unless something crazy not. happens. But it's no way in the world I can see the Raiders go in to the off or go into the season with, you know, J- Gardner Minshew, Aiden Okano, and some like mid-round quarterback. You know, I, I I just don't I don't or, or some you know some last minute free agent that they sign, mm-hmm. I just can't see that happening. Maybe people, maybe Rattler, maybe Rattler. I know a lot of people like Jordan Travis, you know, maybe him later in the round, but I just can't see them going into the season without getting a more uh, established guy at that position. I, I, I think in the quarterback competition between Penix. Aiden Okano and Gardner Minshew, I think uh, Michael Penix wipes the floor with both of them. Yeah, you know, I yeah. think he beats the mustaches off both of them <laughs> in the quarterback competition, bro. So I think it's it's not even, it's not not even a question. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll see, man. You you said Daniel Jeremiah, who who re, like like we said mocked Penix to go to the Raiders recently. Uh, he predicted the the trade up. And all that good stuff right before the draft. So as soon as the draft, we'll pay attention to Jaron. We'll give him the benefit of doubt this time, yeah. and see how his his mock draft looks right before the draft, and and we'll see if there's some truth to it. But for right now, Penix to the Raiders could be a possibility. It could be a possibility. Could be. Could be, man. But but let, let's let's move it along here, man. So, hey, man, Tom Brady is back in the news. Tom Brady is back in the news, and his, and his ownership stake might be might be over. It's a possibility that it might not happen. A really good possibility. Before, uh, you know, obviously this all started last summer. How you know the you know Tom Brady was linked to the Raiders, and Mark Davis is you know linked to to Tom Brady. You've seen him at games. You're seeing him talking, and Mike, Mark Davis has the biggest smile on his face. Call him the greatest quarterback of all time in, in McDaniel's uh, Ziegler conference, press conference. Yeah. Um, it was linked early on that he was going to buy the team, a portion of the team. It had to be voted on, obviously. And when that time came, I think the, it, it came out that the league wasn't comfortable with the deal. Yes. I think Mark Davis pretty much gave Tom Brady a huge discount that the league didn't like, didn't agree with. And they had to Tom Brady and Mark Davis had to get back to the drawing board. I'm sure Tom Brady was able to find that money. and yeah. But I think there's going to be an owner's meeting. If, if not, I think it's ha- or I think it's already happened. or I don't, I'm not sure if it's already happened or it's up. I believe... I think it's coming up. I think it's this upcoming weekend. I think it's this upcoming weekend. Like the 25th to the 27th or something like that. Right. Right. And I guess... To, to, they're pretty much reporting, according to reports, 
the the owners are not going to be voting on the Tom Brady ownership stake. Yeah. And what's coming out is what what the news is is that the report was saying that the biggest issue that's happening now it's not it's not money now. At first, I thought maybe possibly it was money, but come to find out, the owners are not comfortable with Tom Brady being an owner of a team and also being an analyst for a uh, for for a network like Fox, because we all know that the Fox analysts they have a lot of access to each team depending on what game they're going to be commentating. So they're going to, you know, a guy like Tom Brady is going to be talking to coaches and they're going to be talking about game plans and they're going to be going into the building and they're going to be watching the practices. The owners don't really feel comfortable with that, especially a guy who signed a 10 year, $375 million contract with Fox, who's set to basically make his debut as a commentator next year. They're not com- comfortable with that, with that move, especially because he's going to be part, part owner of the Raiders. You can see a competitive guy like Tom Brady is going to be like, hey, look, you know, he, he, he's been – we all know Tom Brady's been been in, been a part of his fair share of uh, scandals and spy gates and deflate gates. So you know he's not going to be too ashamed to be like, hey, Mark, uh, hey, uh, Telesco, hey, uh, AP, you know, the Chiefs yeah. like to run this play on third and, uh, third and third down and short. Yeah. This is their go-to play. This is the trick play. Hey, if, hey I'm good. Hey, if – if if Tom Brady can tell me or tell AP yeah. and the defensive coaching staff all the trick plays in a- Andrew Reed's playbook, oh man! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Tom Brady would do something like that just to keep Patrick Mahomes from catching them Super Bowls. Like what? He got he got how many? Oh no, nah, we about to dead this right now. But, but I, I would say this right, Tom Brady. It, it's like uh, Terry Bradshaw is a Steeler, right? I'm sure he would love to see the Steelers succeed. So, mm-hmm. like you, so like it, I think this is more of they're trying to if if that's truly the reason, right? What they're worried about him stealing other team secrets or giving away their, their game plan or something like that. Like that's more uh, uh, of a of a has more to do with the appearance of it than the actuality of it because most of those guys played for teams before they have rooting interest on those teams so i'm sure they would want to win or want those teams to win so what will prevent terry bradshaw from hey mike mike tomlin you know when you guys play this weekend you know you you got you might want to look out for this or you know or nate burleson from doing it for any of the 18 teams he played for when he was in the league, right? Like, yeah. what's to stop those guys from doing the same thing? So I just think that we're, we're worried about the owner, ownership stake. It's not like the Raiders are going to be, like, super more profit, profitable if they win. Like, their their value is already growing exponentially. So I don't think a couple wins here and there are going to want to grow their value even more or make his ownership stake even more valuable, right? Unless they, like, you know, start to put together multiple Super Bowls or something like that. So I, I just think, man, it, it is the, the NFL doing what they always do, and that is them hating on the Raiders and them trying to stop um, a, a maneuver that, that Mark Davis, uh, a chess move that Mark Davis is making. I think you add a guy like Tom Brady to, to your ownership, he could have that Magic Johnson effect. And we already know what, how Magic – Magic did us with, with Cliff. Like, if Tom Brady is part of the ownership group, do you think Cliff, yeah, he's letting Cliff Kingsbury get up out of this, get up out of that room without signing the contract? Nah, I don't think that's happening, right? Mm-hmm. You, you, and, and, and as soon as he left up out of there, you know, Magic Johnson is on the Facetime. Like, bro, you come on over here, as you said. Oh, you 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 want to pick your own staff? Mm-hmm. Oh, but we got you. You want you you want that third year? Come on over, you know. Yeah. You want you you want some Starbucks? I I got you on that too, dog. You know. Yeah. So I I just I just think I just think it's the it's the NFL man once again hating on the Raiders. Yeah, yeah. I I I I could I could see that I could see that too. I could see that too, man. I I think uh, you, you make some valid points. There's other people in the media. That could probably have some biases sort towards certain teams because they played 
in the NFL. There might be former players, and they might be able to want to. But who knows? We, we, but that's pretty much what's coming out right now. That's what's being reported is the fact that like Tom Brady is going to be an analyst next year for 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 the Fox, and he's going to be in the building for each for each NFL team that he commentates for. And teams are not comfortable with that, so we'll we'll see how it unfolds. But right now, it looks like uh, Tom Brady uh, won't be joining the Raiders ownership anytime soon. So we'll we'll keep an eye, eye on it. And, and and you know what? To be honest, we it's kind of weird talking about Tom Brady because I'm a Raider fan, and, and I ain't gonna lie, being a fan of the Raiders, I hate Tom Brady. Just 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 because I I hated him for just just because of the Tuck rule. And to be honest yeah. with you, who I really hate is the is the referee that called it. But. Facts. You know, Tom Brady having that interview after the game, like, oh, it wasn't, it wasn't a fun ball. I just hate him even more. Like, how could you even lie like that on, on the camera yeah. with a? But obviously, he's not going, he's not going to admit to that. He's sense, not gonna but to, that. to this day, that ref, I watched, I watched the thing with, with Seawood and with Tom Brady. To this day, that ref still is like, nah, man, that's, that's a fumble. But, but know what? But know what? Another thing is though, is like, you know, that kind, that, 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 that game is kind of what set the Raiders down the path. That we're on currently, right? We mm-hmm. had a little bit of success after that, then we, but we kind of never recovered. You know, at, maybe bringing on Tom Brady as a part owner exercises those demons, you know, mm-hmm. and, and we get back to our winning ways. And the NFL is like, we cannot let that happen. We yeah. cannot let the Raiders get back to what they used to be. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. But yeah, man. Hey, man. We just wanted to get in here talk about what happened uh, so far this week. You know, weekly update. You know, bonus show. Usually we 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 go live once a week. Tune in next Monday. We are going to be going live uh, on Monday, um, and we'll be talking about the latest and greatest when it comes to the Raiders. Any obviously any moves that happen now until then. So make sure to tune in and hit, make sure to hit that hit hit that like button. Subscribe. You have subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Shout. Remind them and tell them. Let, let, let's show the people, man. Let's show the people how that looks. Go ahead, like. hit them with it. Shot, shot, shot. Go ahead, hit them with it. Ah, man. It's give, give them the uh, emoji waterfall right here. Look, let's take a look right here. Look, at the end of the day, if you don't know what the thumbs up look button looks like, you can see it on the screen. Man, yes. it's all over, man. Hey, don't worry. Severe is going to be all right. He is going to be okay. <laughs> I know his thumbs everywhere, but look, that's what it looks like. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe. We're, this this is going to be on both our channels, so make sure to, to, to hit the like button on both our channels on the videos and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and yeah yes. man we appreciate everybody coming through and watching man this has been a, a a good show we wanted to get into like i said the latest and greatest with the raiders it's what less than a month we less than a month away less than a month yeah about a about or about a month away, about a month say. you know we're, we're reaching out the last month until the to the draft i know it's like the draft is later in uh in april near the end of april so um uh, now until then man all we're gonna be looking at mock drafts we're gonna do mock drafts so be on the lookout for that man so we appreciate everybody coming through and watching make sure to leave a comment and let us know let us know what you thought think about the thoughts about Penix possibly going to the raiders tom brady not being an owner anymore or not being linked to being an owner no more based off like the moves from uh the ownership ownership group or the owners in the nfl not uh, really voting on uh, Tom Brady becoming an owner. Let us know about that too, as well. Like, uh, and that yeah, man, is, is there anything you want to let the people know? Nah, man. No, appreciate you, everybody joining us. As you, as you said, make sure y'all get down in the comment sections. And before y'all go home, man, make sure y'all clock out. Yeah, man. Like my man said, man, make sure make sure to clock in, clock out, do all that good stuff, man. Hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell, man. Till next time, peace. The gift of Troy is a fabulous fabric from the land of the five rivers.
that the greatness of the Raiders would be in its future. Just win, baby. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it.